Hey guys, I'm Necro and welcome back to another video, this time talking about insurance and escape from Tarkov. Before we get started, I do want to let you guys know that I am starting a new video series here on YouTube called Tarkov Academy. In Tarkov Academy, we will cover topics involving everything there is to know in Escape from Tarkov, from insurance and how it works like we're discussing today, to PvP tips and full raid breakdowns later on. Be sure to subscribe for more coming very soon. Alright, so let's get started. Let's talk about what insurance is and what it does. Insurance is essentially paying to cover your items for them to potentially come back if no one else loots and exfils with your stuff. Whether it's a PMC or a player scav, as long as no one else exfils with your items, they will come back to you in time. Now, if they do leave the raid with your items, you will not be seeing those items again. You will simply not get them back. On the adverse side, as long as you don't lose an item, it'll stay insured for as long as you don't lose it. I've had some armors and weapons that I've taken into a dozen raids at random times that remained insured the entire time, only had to pay for it once, and that was that. Right up until you lose it, you don't have to insure it again. If an item comes back to you via insurance, it will use the insurance that you already paid for, so you can choose to insure it again if you would like, just in case you lose it again, it might come back again. Something to keep in mind, though, is things that are consumable are not insurable. This includes things like meds, ammunition, and food. So there is a little bit more risk in spending a lot of money on this stuff, but I still consider spending money on good meds and ammo a pretty important part of the game. So as you can see here on this screen, uh, the first thing I'm going to point out here is on the bottom left above the next button, uh, you can see the uh, the return time. The estimated return time for Prapor is anywhere from 19 to 28 hours. And then for Therapist, uh, to update, you got to click Ensure All. It's anywhere from 8 to 16 hours. Now that said, when it comes to differentiating between these two, you can see Therapist is a lot more expensive than uh, Prapor is. Uh, with what I have going on here, it costs 313, almost 314,000 rubles for Prapor. And then over a Therapist, it's... 424 almost 425,000 rubles now something to keep in mind here as well is i do have my sick case with keys selected there as well that's a big big part of it because keys are heavily uh the, the sick case itself and keys are heavy on that cost i always deselect that a lot of people choose to just insure them but i'm going to be honest with you the sick case and the keys never leave my pouch so that's something that i just always deselect um and just kind of pay for everything else across the board. When it comes to choosing between Prapor and Therapist, Therapist is a lot more expensive, but if you play the game a lot, you'll be able to get your items back that much faster. 8 to 16 hours is much less of a wait than uh, Prapor's 9 to 28. I personally use Prapor as it kind of gives me time to kind of not play the game, as well as like if the items come back the next day when I'm streaming, then it's just like, oh, here's some more stuff I get to use here instead of paying for more new items. Also, when insurance comes back, it will appear in your messages. Uh, depending on who you choose, either prep or a therapist, you'll see uh, the messages here. It'll have a receive all button. You click on it and everything coming back to you via insurance at that time will appear in a window. And then your stash will be on the right and you can click and drag things over to your stash to keep. They will remain in that message in that window for 70, 72 real world hours. Uh, so be sure to collect it before they disappear in that time slot. A couple things to keep in mind as well is if you go MIA, you will not get your insured items back. A little bit of a trick though, if you know you're about to go MIA, if that if that clock is about to hit zero, you can drop all your items on the ground and they will come back to you. Um, you can pretty much guarantee that no one will loot them because you're you know you're at the the zero timer. So you can drop all your items on the ground and everything that is insured will come back to you. Uh, the way the game thinks about it is when you are going MIA that means they can't find you so they can't bring your items back to you but if it's all on the ground they can find it and bring it back to you you know within uh, the return time window another heads up as well is if you are going to the lab do not insure your items as anything that you lose there you will not get back that's just the rule of that map it's how it is it's the only map that does that so if you are going to the lab do not insure your items as that's just a waste of your money all right, so as you see here, you have all of these items over here that I have equipped right now. 
um, I can choose just insure all right here and it will highlight everything that can be insured across the board. Uh, you can see the total cost that you'll pay down on the bottom right. Again, you can choose between Praporn and Therapist depending on what your re uh, desired return time is. Um, and always, for me, I always deselect my uh, sick case or docs case, whatever I'm taking in with me. I see no purpose in, you know, insuring that stuff as they never leave my pouch anyway. So every item has its own individual cost across the board. Usually the higher cost the item, the more it will cost to insure it. But it will always be less to insure it than the actual cost of the item itself. So this is where the debate comes in on whether things are worth insuring or not. It does vary uh, player to player, situation to situation, map to map, what your goals are. But in my opinion, at the end of the day, I think everything is worth insuring. This is coming from the perspective of someone that usually does play solo. Uh, the way I see it is any item that I don't have to pay for is another item that's getting more value. For example, if I get this Razer headset back here, that's another headset I don't have to buy. If I get this M4 back in, it, in its current state with everything on it, then obviously I don't have to pay for that M4 and all the attachments again. And that's just a great way to kind of invest in yourself and into your own future. Because this M4 costs a lot more than even the total cost of the insurance here. As you can see, 106,000 rubles to insure everything I have on here. Uh, a tier 5 armor, this X-Fill helmet with the uh, the face shield, this M4, all the attachments, the magazines, the 60 round magazines. Those are pretty pricey. They add up. Uh, you know, all this stuff, it gets really expensive really quickly. The unfortunate side is as a solo player... If you run into a, a group of two or more, chances are they're going to pick your body clean. Even your armor a lot of the time will just go missing because someone's like, oh, well, I can use that myself. Whether they have you know worse armor than you and they equip it and use it themselves and end up exfilling with it. Or they're just like, well, I want armor for the future. So they kind of sacrifice their weight at the time to kind of just take it with them. Oftentimes, though, I do find even then I get a lot of my items back. Now, I don't know if I'm just extremely lucky in this situation or what, but overall, I have I have gotten so much value out of the insurance personally. Uh, even when I'm going into a highly active area, say if I'm going right down the middle of interchange to fight Killa and I end up getting taken out by Killa or another player trying to fight him as well, I often find that my body ends up unlooted. And when it comes to really high action areas, a lot of people just do not have the desire to loot you. They don't want to roll the dice on it. They don't want to take the risk of getting killed by someone, you know, camping it. And oftentimes as well, player scavs will not go down those heavily heavy traffic areas. You will not see a whole lot of player scavs kind of scouting around the middle of interchange because there's so much risk as a scav with lesser gear to actually get this type of uh, gear from that part of the map. All right, guys, I hope this video helped. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, this is the first video of our uh, series, the Tarkov Academy. If you're interested in seeing more in the future, everything from videos like this for guides, uh, full raid breakdowns, uh, PVP tips, and all the like, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Also, I'd like to remind you guys that I do stream every day of the week except Sunday. Mondays and Thursdays, I stream on Facebook, and the rest of the week, I stream over on Twitch. You can find links in the description below to those and my other social media, so please follow up. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one.